Okay, let's make some uh, final touches to this. Um, I, I think I actually prefer having the body as one solid color than these actual little containers, but I wanted to show you the divs and how you could do this. Um, and I think it'll look better once we had a background image. So I want to try that. First things first, I'd like to have a little bit more space in these uh, boxes, vertical space. So the padding here, we did left and right 100 pixels, but this we only did 10 pixels. Let's change that to 50 maybe. Uh, better, but maybe a little much. Let's just go to 40. Okay, so learn HTML, learn CSS, learn JavaScript. That looks pretty good. Um, and maybe the left right is actually bigger than I needed it to be. 75. Sure. Okay, now in terms of background, we just did a background color, right? And in our HTML, we actually selected the or sorry, in our, yeah, in our CSS, we selected the HTML element, okay, and gave that a background color. And that's fine. That's the root element, right? Everything is inside of the HTML element. Um, and then these divs have the background color white, etc. So instead of a background color, we can do background images. Um, here we are. Oh, I'm in the advanced, but there's CSS tutorial, there's CSS backgrounds. So you can do background color, you can do background image using this URL, which is basically just like the source for finding a, an image, but it's uh, searching for the URL. Um, you can repeat things. So there's the background repeat, um, no, or no repeat if you don't want it to. You can position things, you can make it fixed. And then again, there's a shorthand property where you can give it a color or an image, no repeat, position, stuff like that. Okay, and then with uh, some advanced CSS, they added some new features. There's a uh, background size, background clip, background origin, stuff like that. Okay, so you can explore these two ones. Um, we'll just do a basic image, and then I'll show you at the bottom here. It talks about creating a um, a full size background image, which is kind of a common thing that you might want to do. So to start off with the basics, let's just go uh, back background image URL like so and then inside of quotations is the image that I want to put in there now the only images I have are these logos so we need to find an image so we can go to Google images again but there's also other sites um, one of them that I've used before is Pixabay stunning free images so these are free to use and uh, this is this always gets tricky finding um, what you want i'm kind of thinking we've got these different colors in here maybe some sort of colorful background to make it the gray is kind of dull right maybe let's make it a little more alive so let's just search colorful background okay there's definitely some colorful backgrounds oh this maybe something like that that's kind of cool a little abstract oh you know what i want to i want to try this one I was thinking colorful, but I think we don't have green. We've got the kind of the reddish, the blue, and the yellow. Maybe green would complement that. Um, oops, where'd I go? Let's try this one. So Pixabay has a little download thing, and you can pick what size you want. Because um, we want this for a full background, this is generally big enough to cover a full screen. Although you can also stretch it and stuff. I'll show you that later. So maybe, oh, no, let's just do this one. Download, okay, so it downloaded into, automatically goes to my downloads folder. Um, I'd like to rename this, uh, not left, leaf background. And then let's cut that and go into our web dev skills, right? The F drive, CS10 web development into our folder. Cool. So now that shows up there, awesome. And here, I just need to tell it where to look. So again, styles.css is here, so it should look inside the images folder and look for leaf background. And I love how Visual Studio Code helps me find these things, right? That means I know that I'm looking in the right spot. All right, let's save that and go here. And hey, that's, that's actually pretty cool. Okay, I like that. Um, but of course, feel free, play around with some other stuff, right? Maybe a, maybe a really colorful one would be cool. Um, leaves. I have no idea. You gotta try. Ooh, that one's nice. Okay, <clears throat> I'm I'm not gonna play around with this. I'll let you play around with different images. What I do want to show you though is um, just to make that H1 pop a little bit more. 
let's give it, um, you know how we did box shadow here? You can also go text shadow. And again, similar idea, um, right and left kind of offset. And then the color, let's just go black. I just want to kind of make it a little more almost 3D. So it, yeah, so it has kind of that depth. Yeah, I like that. So it stands out a little bit more. Web development skills. We've got our content here. Nice little divs with the different stuff. We've got our, yeah, that looks really good. Okay. Um, last thing I was going to show you was in the advanced section, we talked about this background size. Um, oh. And I wanted to show you, how much time do I have? Let's do this. I want to show you the idea of repeat. Um, and I wonder if you can even see it. Uh, I don't know. Because it's a pretty big image. I don't think we're seeing it repeat. So what I want to do is I want to open this with paint.net. I'm going to resize it to like 200 by 133. And I'm going to go save as leaf background and I'll just give it a description small. Okay. And now inside of here, let's use leaf background small. And what you'll see now is it repeats itself to fill the space, right? It was a smaller image and now that image repeats itself over and over again, which doesn't actually look that bad. I like the other one better, but not bad. Um, you can also do that background repeat and say, oops, a colon and then no repeat, right? And then it'll just show the one little image and not do the repetitions, which is obviously not what we want, but just showing that that's possible. Um, you can also do things like, it's kind of neat in Visual Studio Code, right? You could repeat Y. And if you repeat Y, it'll just do a column like that, and repeat vertically. Anyway, let's uh, let's go back to the, the larger image and get rid of that. And now what I wanted to show you was um, how to do this full size background image. So you use, there's a shorthand background property. So instead of background image, you do background and then give it the URL and some of the options that you can, optional settings you can give. And then the background size cover, make sure that it stretches um, to fill the whole screen. Okay. So I think what I'll do is, you know, I'm just going to copy and paste this into here and then of course just replace this with um, images slash leaf background dot jpeg save that and okay now it doesn't look much different than it did before when i just did the large image but this is now um because we did the fixed it won't move it's exactly the size of the screen. And watch what happens when I scroll. As I scroll now, the background isn't sliding. It's looking like this stuff is sliding on top of the background. Just kind of a cool effect. I like that. Okay. And we know what I think we're done here. Play around with different background images, play around with different colors, play around with different fonts, different shadows, different spacing, different sizes. Have, have fun with this, span things, do whatever you want with it. Um, pretty much done here. Um, we may publish this website yet, or I might do, um, we're gonna, I'm gonna do another example on a different topic, and maybe we'll publish that one, we'll see, I haven't decided yet. But for now, I just did like 10 videos in a row, I'm gonna take a break. Okay, um, I'm not a professional web designer, um, and this example was not planned out ahead of time, right? It kind of just playing around with stuff. Um, could this look better? Maybe, like I said, maybe not doing the divs, but doing the whole body actually looks pretty nice. So it's a little more cohesive, but you know what? I think this looks decent. The biggest thing is it's giving you, um, it's giving you an example of these skills, each, you know, page structure, headings and horizontal rules, paragraphs and line breaks, comments, images, links, lists. Um, these containers, strong EM, span, div, um, using an external style sheet, this how to do um, CSS with selectors and styles, comments, colors, fonts, links, the box model, and backgrounds, all sorts of stuff. 
So like I said, we'll look at how to, um, GitHub is a, a great tool for um, storing stuff online and keeping track of different versions. And you can also um, publish your code as uh, using GitHub pages and it's really easy. So I will probably do a video to show you how to do that. So you can make your wonderful stuff. Um, actually, that's what I did here, right? MrValcam.github.io. So you make a, you get a free account and then you can upload your, um, your code to that free account and then it'll, you can publish it. Okay. So I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Um, hope you guys are enjoying this. And like I said, the biggest thing is you're learning these skills. You're getting these tools so that you then create um, whatever you would like. Um, for now, though, I'm going to give you a bunch of assignments. Try to build this. Try to build this. Um, after one more playlist of videos. And then this, I, I'm really looking forward to the project Explore and Create. We're going to learn some awesome skills in these three courses here, the web development, the programming, and the web graphics. And then once you've learned those skills, you can build all sorts of neat stuff. And then, of course, we build on it in CS20, right? We learn more advanced programming techniques so you can build bigger and better things. Okay, anyway, I love this course. It's awesome. I hope you're enjoying this. Um, see you in the next video where we're going to publish this website. I'll show you how to make a GitHub account and go through that. Um, until then, take care.